Hey guys, Matt here today getting back into John 1 and we talked about John 1 29-35 last time, last couple of videos how John, John the Apostle was speaking about John the Baptist who was pointing out that Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and as the Lamb of God is the uh, the, the one who takes away the sins, Jesus is given the Spirit without measure. The John testifies, I, I, I saw the Spirit fall on Jesus, and there was something interesting. It remained on him. It didn't leave him. And then John, at the end of that chunk there, John concludes, he's the Son of God. He says, I witness, I have borne witness that he is the Son of God. Now we get into 35 through 51, a big chunk of scripture, probably do two or three videos, but I want to read it all together. It's going to be long, but it's really important because you're going to see a lot of titles being given to Jesus, and it's powerful. John 1.35 The next day again, John was standing with his two, two of his disciples, rather, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by, and John said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Well, there it is again. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Very interesting. We'll come back to that. Jesus turned and saw them following him, and he said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour, about four o'clock. One of the two who heard John speak and follow Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found Messiah, which means Christ. Also means the anointed one, or the, the Savior, the one who's going to save his people, right? He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So, you are Simon, the son of John, eh? <laughs> You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. Also means rock. It means rock in just about every language. So he calls him Cephas, which, which is Peter. Verse 43, The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and he said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found him whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He says, remember all that Moses wrote about, all that the prophets wrote about, that Messiah? We found him. We found him. Verse 46, Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Hmm. Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael then answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. All right. A lot of theological freight packed in here. Um, let's just break it down uh, one by one. Let's start in verse 35. So John sees Jesus and again he calls him the Lamb of God. It's interesting. John's the only one who uses this phrase. And when you think Lamb of God, you might think of Isaiah 53, where it says he was like a lamb led to slaughter. Because they didn't really sacrifice lambs, but this one's a different sacrifice. He's the Lamb of God. John also refers to him as, as, in Revelation as, he says, I saw a lamb as though slain. Jesus is the Lamb of God, slain for his people, the perfect Lamb of God, the sinless, perfect one, and yet an interesting thing happens. The interesting thing is, is the disciples see him and they start to follow him immediately. So he's not just the Lamb of God, 
He's also the shepherd. But he's not just any shepherd. We'll find out in John 10. He's the good shepherd. So, we start to see this lamb of God is a different kind of lamb. He actually is a shepherd at the same time. And people follow him. And there are terms, there are titles bestowed upon him. So, remember John 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We went back to Genesis 1, we saw God the Father. Genesis 2, we saw God the Spirit. Genesis 3, God spoke. He said, let there be light. He speaks, and those words that come out of God's mouth are, well, they're the Word of God. That only makes sense. But Jesus is the Word of God. So we saw John 1, Jesus is the Word of God. Now in verse 36, he's called the Lamb of God. In verse 38, he's called the Rabbi. Verse 41, he's the Messiah. Verse 49, he's the Son of God and the King of Israel. And then the last verse, 51, he's the Son of Man. All of these titles, Lamb of God, Rabbi, which means teacher, Messiah, the Anointed One, the One who comes to save, Son of God. He has to be the Son of God to get dominion, to be the heir of all things, which makes him the King of Israel, the one they've been waiting for, who can actually come and change the hearts, not like other kings. And therefore, he's also the Son of Man. Adam was the first Son of Man, the first son, but he was a bad son. Jesus comes, born under the law, born 100% man, 100% God, and as such, if he does everything perfectly, he will fulfill the law, he will be the righteous one, he will then be the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. He'll be able to teach people, Rabbi. He will be the anointed one, Messiah, because he's given the Spirit without measure. He's the only one who can save his people. He will then be the Son of God. It will prove that he's the Son of God. Thusly, he's the King of Israel and the Son of Man. All of these titles bestowed upon Jesus, miraculous. He's the one we've been waiting for. And I had a thought this morning when I was noodling on this. All of these titles, I think, are a beautiful thing. There's something that is worthy of meditating on. But I think there's something else. I think it's an appetizer. I think it's something which is whetting our appetite for John 6, John 8, John 10, John 11, John 14, John 15, where Jesus says, I am. Am. I am the bread of life. I am the, the light. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine. Jesus is going to come out and say, I am. Which means Yahweh, I am, I cause to be. Jesus is showing that he is part of God. All of this is building up, making the plain case that Jesus, of course, is God. Not in God in entirety, but God in part. He's part of the, the Godhead. He's part of the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So, John's disciples see Jesus. Verse 38, Jesus turned and saw them, and they were following him. That's what, that's what sheep do, right? They follow the shepherd. And Jesus said, what are you seeking? And they said to Jesus, Rabbi, which means teacher. They knew who he was. Rabbi, then they say something odd. They say, where are you staying? Why would they ask such a question? Where are, they, where are you staying, Jesus? I don't think they cared where he was staying. I think they were nervous and they were excited and they were in awe. And if you were a hockey fan and you met the world's greatest hockey player and you just ran into him unexpectedly, you might say something Silly, like, uh, how is your lunch today, or something like that. That's what they're doing, except for this isn't a hockey player. This isn't an athlete. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is their teacher, and they know it. So they say, Rabbi, where are you staying? And you could almost, if you were there, you, you almost would, would see one of them elbowing the other one and say, why would you ask such a silly question? <laughs> but Jesus, verse 39, Jesus said to him, ah, come and you'll see. In other words, follow me. 
come. I'll show you. I'll show you where I'm staying. I'll show you a whole lot more too. So they came and they saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day because it was late in the day. Verse 40, one of the two heard John speak and followed Jesus. One of the two who heard John speak heard and followed Jesus. It was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He what did what did Andrew do when he found Christ? He first found his own brother. He went to Simon and he said, "We have found the Messiah. We found him. We found the one we've been waiting for. We found the Christ. We found the one that the Old Testament was telling us about. He, Andrew, brought him, Peter, to Jesus. Cephas, uh, Simon rather. He brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. So, right away, Jesus, as the Lamb of God, proves he's also the Shepherd of God. People start following. Jesus is choosing his disciples in a very precarious way. He doesn't hold tryouts. He doesn't have uh, interviews. He just shows up. He's sovereign. He's totally in charge as the Son of God as the King of Israel, as the anointed Messiah. He's anointed with the Spirit beyond measure. He controls everything. And he just, he knows who he wants. And he shows up and they follow him. That's the King that is Jesus Christ. We'll stop here and then we'll pick up on verse 43 for the next video. Peace.